Hey guys, just dropped off my kids from school, passed by my aunt's house. But before I do that, what I do is I stop at a local bakery. What I do is I pick up two loaves of semolina bread. Okay, Kings Highway Bakery. This bread is the best, okay? It's hot, it's soft, delicious. I break off a piece, I eat a whole loaf. That's how good this bread is, it's delicious. By the time I get to my aunt's house, there's one loaf left, okay? I give it to her. Now, there's nothing like Brooklyn bread. If you're from New York City, Brooklyn, any kind of borough, you know there's nothing like Brooklyn bread. People in other states would love to have New York City bread. We have the best bread, Italian bread, all over the country, the best. What I also do is I grab a cup of coffee. Little coffee in the morning, semolina bread, This is the way we do it in Brooklyn, okay? Born and raised, Bay 22nd Street, and bed on my birth certificate. Now, I wanted to talk today about when I first went into Rikers Island. You know, I did 90 days at the age of 18, 19 years old. I got caught with a gun and I got 90 days in Rikers Island. So, you know, when you first go to Rikers Island, you know, you go to court back and forth until you get your plea deal. And on all my cases, I pled out. I never had a code offendant on none of my cases until I got indicted what my friends from Bath Avenue, Anthony Sparrow and Joe Bonanti. Never had a court offendant before in my life. So all my cases were real simple. You know, you take a plea, you do the time, and it's simple. So let me tell you what happens when you go to Rikers Island. So you give yourself into the court. They put you on the bus. You go to Rikers Island. When you go to Rikers Island, you wanna make sure you got a couple of dollars in your pocket. This way they put it right into your commissary. This way you'll be able to use the phone and you have money to eat, a cup of coffee, stuff like that. Not sure if they do the cigarette thing anymore. I think they took that away. They might've brought it back. I don't know. So you get to Rikers Island, then they bring you to the infirmary the hospital. They want to make sure uh, you're healthy, if you need medicine, and things like that. Have any wounds. Then what they do is they put you in a cell and they strip you. They throw some clothes at you. You pick out a pair of blue decks that have been used before. They give you an orange jumpsuit and that's basically your gear until you can get a package from your family and friends and they come visit you. You'll get a nice pair of sneakers, uh, some gray sweats and whatever the colors are that they let you to use because there's certain colors in prison you cannot use anymore. I think it's blue, red, all gang colors yellow, black, stuff like that. You know, the yellow and black is for Latin Kings. You got the red for the Bloods. You got the blue for the Crips. So they're on top of all that. And they will also search you for any kinds of tattoos you have. They wanna know if you're associated with a gang or an organized crime family 
and they'll keep tabs on you. And always remember something, any prison you go to, whether you're going upstate, Rikers Island, a county jail, there's always a snitch in the prison. There's someone in the prison that is trying to get information from you, okay, that is working with the counselor or the COs. They want to know about you. They want to know if you did other crimes before. So they'll send someone into your prison cell or uh, someone into the courtyard, wherever you are, you're walking the track. That will make believe they try to be friends with you. So you have to be up on this and very smart to know that they're trying to get more information. They want to know what you were about. They know you were, uh, what you copped out to as far as the crime. But they want to know if you have other crimes behind you. And if you do, some people most likely will talk about that. So be careful when you go to prison. Don't tell anyone about your past. And like certain people say, whether it's Michael Franchese or Sammy, uh, you know, once you commit a crime with somebody, after you commit that crime with somebody, that crime is over with. You never ever talk about that crime ever again. And if someone ever brings that crime back up to you, you know, that that person is up to no good. And most likely that person is a snitch. Now, as you're doing time in Rikers Island, Rikers Island is a hardcore place. You have a lot of juvenile delinquents. Uh, everyone has a razor, usually in their mouth. You got a blade. <laughs> and breakfast is mandatory. You can't sleep in the dorm for breakfast. They want to make sure everyone's alive and well. So they wake everyone up and you have to go to breakfast. And that's where they get the head count. Now, you walk through the hallways in Rikers Island in a one line. One line's going, going uh, one line, a group of people going one way. You got another line, a group of people coming the other way. You might know one of your homies, one of your boys. You say hello, hey, what's up? And if not, sometimes there's also beefs. And if there's a beef, someone will pull out a razor to start cutting. Another guy pull out a razor, start cutting. The ninjas, the ninja squad starts coming. They have the gear on, and you can't fuck with them. They backflip you, they beat you down, they give you a fucking beating. Forget about it. So after you eat breakfast, you go back to the dorm or the unit and you want to use the phone. Now, there's always someone trying to control the phones. Me, when I was in prison, I never wanted to control no phones. I never wanted to control nothing, okay? I worked in the kitchen where I could get food as far as bread, uh, hard boiled eggs, I could make pizzas, I can make pastries. I can make a special dish for somebody. So I liked working in the kitchen and I also liked cooking. So, and you could also make money like that. You know, if someone wants something, you could charge them. So as you're doing prison time, then after breakfast, they'll usually call the yard around 11, 12 o'clock. When they call the yard, you have to line up you have to sign your name and you walk to the yard. Rikers Island depends what floor you're on. You, they take you to a staircase and in that staircase, you go down, all the way down to the basement, to the yard. And every so often, mostly all the time, there's always a cutting or a fight. That's one thing about Rikers Island, there's always something getting cut. So, you know, to be in prison, you gotta be a tough guy. If you're not a tough guy, eventually you're gonna get eaten up and hurt. So I recommend all you kids out there watching this video, do the right thing, go to school, get a job, listen to your parents and become something of yourself because there is no fun in prison, especially a prison like Rikers Island. Me, 
I was fortunate enough at the age of 23 when I did do some big time and I went to Lewisburg Penitentiary, I had a lot of organized crime figures looking out for me. So I was fortunate in that way. But Rikers Island is one of the worst prisons you want to do time in. And I recommend never ever to go there. The other thing is you have your people that come up and visit you. You get one hour visit with them. So by the time you're saying hello, you're also saying goodbye. And they could bring you a package. A lot of inmates make their girlfriends bring in drugs. They'll put it in their mouth. When they kiss their girl goodbye or they kiss their girl hello, the girl will transfer the balloon into the inmate's mouth. He'll swallow it. Later on, when he gets to his prison cell, he'll shit it out, he'll open it up, and then what he'll do is he'll distribute it, and now he's the man. He's got the drugs, he's making the money, and everyone's gonna come looking for him because drugs are big in prison. You have a lot of drug addicts in prison that are on this methadone, and they need it. Once you don't get it, then you start getting sick. So there's a lot of things about prison and once you walk in there, sometimes you could walk in there with 90 days, for example. And you know what? You might never walk out again because you might have to kill a motherfucker in jail. So that's what's so bad about prison. The Italian people, most likely, all of us, when we go into prison, we do our jail sentences. We come from good families. We have organized crime on our record and... You know, they know right away if you have an Italian last name, you're involved in the mafia, and they pretty much respect you. And everybody knows everyone in Rikers Island because you usually know somebody because you're coming from the boroughs, whether it's Queens, Staten Island, the Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, everybody knows somebody. So that's my story about Rikers Island today. I wanted to share that with you, but doing time, there's no fun in doing time. I can tell you right now, as you do time, you're gonna miss your family, you get more time, and then you get mixed up with a bad group of people that you're gonna regret later because you can't trust nobody in prison. As much as you think you can, you cannot. So that's my Rikers Island story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll probably continue another story after this one. But I wanted to share this Rikers Island story with you. I wanted to show you that in the morning, I got some semolina hot Brooklyn bread, a cup of coffee, nice. And later on in the day, I go to work. But I will continue another video after this. Enjoy your Monday morning today to everybody. Have a blessed day. I love you guys. And to my Matt Mingo, my friend, Matt Mango, I'm going to miss you daily. And you're always going to be in my heart. With that said, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.